All right. The Bellator MMA featherweight division was at the forefront on Saturday night during Bellator 263. And before AJ McKee delivered one of the best finishes of the year so far, this man picked up a hard fought victory in one of the very best fights of the year, in my opinion, defeats Emmanuel Sanchez via unanimous decision in the co-made event at the forum. Let us say hello to the soon to be jumping on an airplane, Mads Burnell. Mads, how are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Good to have you here, man. Seven wins in a row now for you. And Emmanuel Sanchez is a very tough out. The losses for that man do not happen often, but when they do, they're against guys who are at the top of their games, the top of their division. So how does it feel a few days later after picking up a win on such a big card against a guy as tough as Emmanuel Sanchez? It, it's, of course, it's super cool. It was, uh, it was a cool match, a fun match too, I think, being in. How much fun did you have in there? Like normally when you fight a guy like that, who's just so fast paced, everyone knew that the scrambles are going to be crazy between the two of you guys. Like on a scale of one to 10, like how much fun did you have in there? And how, how like would you nine or something? Nine, nine? Or something. Yeah. Because what I feel like he was throwing a lot of volume, right? But I was seeing all that shit. So he was just hitting me in my guard and on my shoulders. So I was just walking him down, boom, boom, boom. And then like trying to counter him. Of course, some of them sneak through, but like the majority of it, it was just smoke. They were hitting my guard. So it's like, it was like being in the gym kind of. But I was really impressed by, uh, but it's like, I feel like, ah, now I'm tiring him because I was putting a lot of pressure on him. I was actually putting pressure on him that he usually do to people, right? But I was walking him down and going to the body and all that. So I was like, ah, okay, now he's slowing down. And then it felt like he was slowing down. And then all of a sudden, the dude, he gets freaking gas from I don't know where. Like that, that, that. And then he keeps going. Okay, like, what the hell is wrong with this dude? <laughs> it's been pretty amazing to watch what you've done the last few years because, you know, there are fighters, once they make it to the UFC, they, they feel like they've made it. And if it doesn't work out, fans sort of react like, well, that's it. They're done. It doesn't get any better than that. But since then, you I mean, you're better than ever. 7 and 0 including Cage Warriors what you've done in Bellator so far. Like, would you say much changed for you since parting ways with the UFC? Did it give you a boost in motivation? Like, how would you describe it? Yes, it gave me a boost in motivation, but it also gave me a boost in my maturity and how to like do stuff. Yeah. That I would say it matured me a lot. How so? Like specifically? Like men mentally. I think mentally it matured me a lot. Like being in the UFC, I feel like, oh, it was cool. I'm the youngest Dane ever being signed to UFC. I think I was actually one of the youngest in UFC at the time and then getting kicked out. I was like, oh, shit. I need to get my shit together. And I got my shit together and I'm very happy for everything that happened because I'm very, very happy to call Bellator my home. I think the fight between you and Sanchez, it was kind of like a hardcore fans delight heading in. Like, were you seeing the build like to the fight? Cause there was a lot of excitement around your fight, even though the main event was the main event and everybody was talking about that. There was a lot of people talking about your fight with the manual as being like a potential barn burner. Were you seeing that attention on social media and such? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that. I feel that. And, and like, I feel like uh, Sanchez, he, he is kind of a MMA version of Arturo Gatti. Like, you know, whenever he goes in there, it's, he, he can't be in a boring fight. It yeah. was a very, yeah. It was, I mean, it was a very close fight. The scores were all over the place on Twitter land. How are you feeling afterwards? Like, were you confident you were getting your hand raised after that final yeah. horn rang? Yeah. I was super confident. The only I, thing I thought was like, ah, uh, like if the, if the judges can see, like, because my defense is very subtle. You need to be educated to understand my, my defense. You need to be educated in boxing to understand my, my defense. If not, if you don't, if you're not educated, you, you think, oh, I'm just walking into shots, which I'm absolutely not. I'm, I'm just blocking him with my arms, blocking him with my shoulders, rolling off, coming back, just inching my way into him. And yeah, the, the judges could see that. Like, look, if you look at the fight, look at the, look at my, like, look at my face. It looks like I come straight from a dance party. I don't have one mark. If you look at his fucking face after the first round, he was bleeding and all that. So, yeah, I was super confident I got it. Plus, I, I mixed it up well, putting some. Of course, he 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 did very well too. I'm not saying that he did. He was game as game as they come, and I have a lot of respect to Emmanuel. Uh, but like, I mixed it up well too. Like, boom, 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 putting some hands on. We were going back and forth on the feet. Boom, then I got a takedown in. 
And the, we knew he was very good at getting up. So the plan was like, don't use too much energy to get him down. And if I get him down, don't use too much energy to keep him there. So if he gets up, walk him to the cage and blast him to the body before you let him go. And that worked pretty well. When you heard the 30-27s, were you still feeling confident? Because I, I was 100%. The, you, I, like when I heard the 30-27, then I knew like, yeah, it's definitely mine. Because if, if like... A, let's say the judge is like, eh, because they m might not have, like, seen my defense. 100%, I knew I won the third round. So, if it's 30-27, yeah, I was like, okay, won that. So, it's cool. Yeah, I, I, I think, I thought the first round, I mean, again, and I'm not a judge, and thank God, I guess, because I would have got that one wrong. I thought he won the first round, and then mm -hmm. the other two were close, but I had no problem with you getting getting the nod, but I mean, were, were you, I mean, I know you're getting ready to prepare for your own fight, but there were a couple of pretty questionable judges scorecards prior to your fight. Were you aware of those at all? Like a couple of fights that probably should have gone the other way, but didn't. No. You were focused well, on your aware. own stuff. Yeah. But seriously, try to go back and watch that first round in slow-mo. Motherfucker oh. hitting eight, seven, eight punch combos he ain't hidden with one punch in some of them com them combos it's all smoke it's that defense the tenacious defense it's the defense you but you don't get rewarded for defense nobody gives a fuck about the defensive player of the year in nba that's a everybody shame. thinks mayweather is boring how many people know james tony who knows who willie pep is the defense how many mastermind. people know archie Moore, jace joe walker as a charles none because they're uneducated. <laughs> no, so you... but I understand. Like, it's it's entertainment, too. Like, offense is very cool. And I'm not knocking people and saying people are stupid and this and that. Of course, people are entitled to their opinion. That's just my opinion about defense, right? It's very subtle. And I understand if, like, if you tell me to do math, I don't know jack, jack shit about math. There's a lot of stuff I wouldn't understand. And it's the same with people don't understand like this subtle defense I do, then they'll be like, oh, he's getting hit. But he's not. But, what? But he's not getting hit. You're not getting hit. Look at this. My face still pretty. <laughs> so. Clean as a whistle, my man. Mm -hmm. So heading in to this fight, Bellator had already announced that the fight between Adam Borch and JJ Wilson, that's the number one contender fight. They were going to get the winner of Pitbull versus McKee. A lot of people thought that the winner of your fight, especially if you won, which you did, you should be the number one contender. And it seems like you're pretty loosey-goosey. You're not in a giant rush to get to the bell. You're not calling anybody out. But is there a part of you that feels like you should be that guy that's next in line after getting that win? Like you said, I'm pretty loose about it. Actually, what I want the most right now is to fight. And, like, I would really love if Bellator came to Denmark or, like, just fight close to home because we, we have had all this COVID stuff. Uh, so we haven't been able to fight in front of an audience. We did that now, and that was super cool. I really loved in the first round, we were starting to sling leather, and then Emmanuel hit me with some combos, and people were like, oh, and then I hit him with some combos, they're like, oh, and then he hit me back, like, ah, and it was going crazy. That was super cool. I love that. Uh, but I really like to fight in Denmark or close to home, and yeah, take one fight at a time and just go in and do me. And then eventually, like, I can't be denied. Maybe the Dublin card? Is that close to you? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to be on the Dublin card. My friend Patch is, is fighting on that too, so that would be cool fighting on the same card as him. There you go. McKee had the big finish in the main event. I know you're impressed with, with the highlights that you saw. Were you surprised that he was able to go in there and, and just emphatically put Pitbull away that quickly? If you look at some of the interviews I had before this event, I actually picked McKee to, to beat Pitbull, so no, I was not. It seems, I, I, I was yeah. pretty confident that he was going to beat him. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I was I was hoping the fight would, selfishly would go longer, just because I would I would have loved to have seen what a fourth and a fifth round would have looked like between those two guys. But man, yeah. AJ McKee was just not going to be denied at all. He's and a wild seems, man. He is a wild man. He's very good. I, I feel like this was his coming out party, and I feel like you kind of dealt with that yourself. And it seems like his future as the featherweight champion is kind of up in the air because he said prior to the fight on Saturday that. That might be his last fight at 145. It's a big weight cut for him. And he was asked about it at the press conference. Wouldn't like 100% commit to that. 
but he wants to go up to 55 and fight Pitbull for the lightweight title and be a champion. So <laughs> that would be that would be so that must be shitty being Pitbull. You just got knocked out by a dude for your featherweight belt, and it's like, oh yeah, now you gotta fight him for your lightweight belt. It's like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> If he go like if he goes up to fifty five and wins that title, do you think there's any chance he'd come back down again, or do you think he, I like, got the two belts, I can get per, one up? Per, personally, if I think most fighters would do that, if you can avoid cutting weight and still be like successful, why would you go back? If if he has the same if you have the same success in like lightweight compared to when you fought featherweight, why would you go back to featherweight? Right. Yeah. W- would you be disappointed from a competitive standpoint if you never got the chance to fight AJ? I don't really care. You don't really care? No, I don't think about that. Where does the loosey goosiness come from? Is that just the maturity that, that you've learned over the years since, since yeah, the UFC time? Like, of course, it's, it's important you take the fight game serious because the fighting game is like a girl. If you don't treat her right, she's, she won't treat you right. You got to treat her like your wife, but you shouldn't be uh, like uh, shouldn't be too tense about it. Life goes on. As long as your mom and dad still love you, you're good. Well said. <laughs> so if yeah. we're up to you, Dublin against anybody. Yeah, Dublin. Yeah, I don't have anybody on top of my mind. I'm, I know I've called out Vaisho. That would be a fun fight because I think he's a cool fighter and yeah, one of the Europe European guys. So Vaisho would be a cool fight. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think the only other guy that'd be ranked like in that same area, like below you, that would be available would be Pico. And I think Weichel probably is at this point like a, a better matchup. I know you and Aaron are both managed by the same group and everything. So mm. I don't know. I, I think that makes a lot of sense, especially if we could do it in Dublin. Uh, I and know you're getting both ready. Europeans. And you're both Europeans, both which Europeans. makes sense yeah. too. Uh, I know you're about to jump on a plane, but I, no I wanted stressing, to ask. No I wanted to ask on, in the post, post by presser, by the way, you stole the show. Um, you talked about wanting a good burger, a delicious post-fight meal worthy of, of, of the performance that you had. And you talked about your coaches eating good food around you and almost kind of rubbing it in. Like, were you able to, uh, to satisfy that need? Were you able to indulge in something delicious at all after that victory? Yeah, actually that was pretty cool. Ali, he has, he had some food, uh, for some of the fighters in his room, some very good food. And then when I came down in the lobby, Chris Gonzalez apparently bought in and out for everybody. So I'm just standing there with uh, my coach. We're like, we drinking a beer, me and my coach. And Chris comes behind me, like, chokes me like, yo, you hungry? I'm like, yeah. And it's like, oh, shit, look there. I bought in and out for everybody. It's like, shit. And then he had burgers for everybody. So I got an in and out and a Modelo. So that was cool. In and out for everybody? Like, he bought a big, big, big fucking case with in and out burgers. That's amazing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Shout out to Chris Gonzalez for that. That's pretty cool. That that gets points in my book. Especially after like fighting a guy like Goichi and you know having a tough night, he goes out and you know rather than sulking it, he goes and buys everybody burgers. I mean that is a, yeah. that is a true gem of a human that, being that, right there. That's super cool. And I think to be honest, that's the way to go. Like yeah, if you get a loss, like they say, like don't let it don't let it get too much to your heart. Like think about it, assess what you did wrong, and then life goes on. On to the next. And how do you how do you assess the wins? Like how do you deal with the wins so you don't oh, get like I'm, overconfident? I'm almost I'm almost more critical about my wins than I'm about my losses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never satisfied. But that's I think if you want to be a top fighter, that's what you should you shouldn't be satisfied. The day you're satisfied, you should probably retire. Have you watched the fights since Saturday? Yeah, I watched many times, many times. And what was your biggest takeaway of like in terms of things you need to improve on? Hmm. hmm. That's a good question because it was such a bond burner. It was actually more like I was, well, I really like the entertainment part of it. Hmm. I was seeing what I did positive. I really think, I think what I was looking a lot for was actually my low calf kick because before my last fight with Saul, I didn't really kick that much. But then Dennis, he watched Saul fight and he was very bladed. So he's like, yo, you can blast him with that low calf kick. So I worked it, worked it, worked it in practice. It worked pretty well against Saul, but I really feel that I hit uh, Sanchez with some good uh, low calf kicks. And I was like, I saw him like, like it looked like it hurt on him once. And I kept going to it, but he was just freaking like, 
you take in everything. It's like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? And now my own leg is bust, busted up for kicking him so much. I'm like walking around like I need crutches. <laughs> what happens if you fight a zombie like that, man? Just poker face yeah. all day. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call Emmanuel a zombie because I feel if you're a zombie, you're like not technical. I think he's very, very technically sound, standing and on the ground. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, I meant that with all due respect, Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Emmanuel Sanchez. Listen, Matt, congratulations on the win. Tremendous performance, not just in the cage, but out of it on the mic and at the post fight press conference. I think you uh you stole the show after the fact and you had everybody laughing and hooting and hollering. So safe travels to you, my man, and hopefully we get to see you on that November card in Dublin. Have a nice day, man, and thanks for the time. I appreciate it. If if it weren't for guys like you, reporters, we wouldn't have like uh, all the fans watching and all that. So thank you for your work.